we've had some citizens that have been just indignant over this issue from time to time, but we don't know exactly what we're paying for water. Well, this is the reason why. It's because we don't know how much water we're going to sell. And TRAs, they're not a, they're a quasi-governmental entity. they got to cover their costs. They're not trying to make any money. they got to cover their costs. And their costs vary uh, on some ends, and some of them ends are fixed. The debt are fixed. Their salaries are fixed. But uh, the utilities, they're just as subject as the rest of us to their utility costs. They got a little longer contract still. So that's the problem that there will always be. And at one point, several years ago, we had a lengthy discussion about whether we could set our rate in arrears. And we decided that that was probably not the way to do it. Uh, that would be really confusing. Well, I, I mean, you could do a more accurate job of setting it. I, I, to me, it would be less confusing to the residents. But anyway, we discarded that and came to y'all several years ago with the idea of this rate stabilization. And so the rate stabilization was established to smooth the what we thought would be increases and decreases, because historically that's what we've had. But I'm not real sure that in the next few years it's not just going to be increases from the cost of raw water. You just stop and think about it. The scarcity of water is on the news, you know, on a regular basis. It's one of the top priorities for our state with our increased population and uh, decreased water supply. And, uh, and the regulatory issues are significant. We'll put the use of our reclaimed water. Would we use, we're putting in the new lines now. We're doing that. Would we be using perhaps less water each year? Less than we would if we didn't have it. Right. About about is it for six six percent of that. But as we grow, and we don't project huge growth, but uh, you know that our water's going to continue to increase our water use. And TRWD, their 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 budget cost is pretty much mirrors this also, yeah. correct? Yeah. Yeah. TRA is that. that's that's some of the issue is that TRA is dependent on TRWD. Yeah. Tarrant Regional Water District, which is the large mm -hmm. water wholesaler. They sell raw water to TRA. TRA treats it. They sell it to us. Well, all down that food chain from us back to TRWD is this very same issue of fixed cost and estimated use that gives you flawed numbers. I mean, it's the best they get, a flawed probably is the way to put it, but it's, it's, it's never going to be accurate. It was never intended to be accurate. Same thing as y'all's cotton growth. If you could project, you know, exactly how much cotton you're going to grow in a wet year, dry year, you could be really good farmers, but that's why there's not that many real good farmers around. So, does that, yeah, I'm very, very concerned. Yeah, Senator Bernie's one is. Well, I, 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 I can't carry it, but. Yeah, yeah but it, so he had reached his goal with me. I just keep putting on the test. Yeah. 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 So I hope that helps you understand why it cannot, it will not, it will never be an exact science. Mm -hmm. it, it, it cannot be. Back to that the same budget year that we do? No, that's the other thing. That's yeah. budget the year. It's actually, their budget year is December 1st. Mm -hmm. their, their fiscal year is December 1st. Yeah. So they won't adopt these rates until September. They actually will do it in August. August, August 7th and August 13th. Oh, okay. They'll get them both in the So year. all this, we're going to be working towards an adoption of our rates in September. And so we will know what their rates are going to be, but just understand their rates yeah. is not necessarily. Um, and when do we get the crew up about February? May, mm -hmm. May following the close of the year. So the, after the year end um, in December. Their uh, year end in December. Yes, yeah. we get it. Yes, we get it following May. So. so what I want to do now is. Has anyone ever asked them why? I mean, why would it take you five months? At the end of December, you know what you spent. I mean, the, why does it take them five months to figure out this well, number divided by how much you used? Can you get a calculator? Audits. 
That's the year end close as well as the audit and then to process it from there. You know, it sounds like we, our fiscal end year end is in September and our audit is yeah, in January. Right so we're, we're right there with them. They're a lot bigger operation. But. <laughs> and we've talked to them through the years about changing their fiscal year and, you know, that's. You change yours. Yeah. <laughs> well, they moved up the adoption dates to try and work with the city so that we could at least have better revenue. So the, the revenues that you saw on the earlier slide are predicated on the rates that we're going to show you here. Um, so if we uh, decided to change any of these rates, it would obviously impact the revenue that you saw earlier. Uh, the base rate, uh, we are not proposing any change to the base rate. We are proposing to increase each of the tiers by 19 cents. Um, and on the wastewater side, again, we're not uh, proposing any change to the base rate, uh, but we're proposing a change of 36 cents uh, on the wastewater side. Uh, we are proposing to increase the uh, rebate from the rate stabilization fund from 12 cents to 25 cents to help, help offset the impact of these increases. Uh, and we have several slides that here that will walk you through uh, that will help you understand the impact on the various uh, levels of users. Uh, we will remind you that the uh, rate stabilization rebate uh, only applies to the single family residential customer and only applies to the first 15,000 gallons. Um, we have determined this amount based on the rebate that we received from TRA uh, this past year, as well as looking out at what they're projecting in the future years and then what we have available. Um, it's one of those things, could you, could you do a little more on the rate stabilization? Possibly, but the reason that we're kind of recommending that we limit it to there is because uh, when we get to the five year projected rates from TRA, there is no decrease. If, if there was a decrease down out there, we could maybe pooch it up a little bit and, and pick it back up when the rate decreased, but their projections is all uphill. <coughs> so, well, especially from the, the wastewater. So the total, even if you end up with a lot of rain and less water usage, your the treatment part is getting more and more expensive every year, and your wastewater costs are going to constantly be going up, and that's going to be the big spike. So, it's, we just we, we strongly recommend that we limit it to this 25 cent, which is a pretty good, it's, it's pretty good. I mean, the 15,000 gallons covers absolutely most of our uh, customers that are we're still using about 8,000 gallons as the average user. So the average user would spend $3 a year, would contribute $3 a year basically towards the stabilization fund. 25 cents per no. No, no, we're giving that back to them. We take and on your bill, whatever your usage is, we apply the full rate and then we turn around and give you a refund of 25 cents on the first 15, up to the first 15,000 gallons. So it's actually a credit on their bill each month. And Why that's based on the water usage, not the waste water. It's based right, on the water right. usage. And it's only water, right? Yes. You get no, yeah, that's a good point. No, no. And it is simply a way to help level out those fluctuations that we were looking at and to help because uh, uh, when we get any sort of refund back from TRA, it's a way to help give that money back to them, but continue to charge what is the amount that is, is required for uh, operation of the system. And then looking at the rest of the rate table, we have irrigation rates also being incremented by the same 19 cents. Uh, you'll recall that the irrigation rates uh, start at what would be the third tier for a residential customer. They do not get benefit on the irrigation meters of those first two lowest tiers. Uh, obviously, those first two lowest tiers are intended for uh, your normal household usage. Uh, commercial multifamily has the same 19 cent increase also, as does the construction meters and gas well meters. There again is no change to the monthly base charge uh, for any of the uh, commercial leaders. Now remember, we may need to resurrect some information for you. Last year we had a businessman that was very concerned, came to y'all very concerned about the commercial not getting the rebate. Right. And if you recall, we went back and did the research and it, uh, I think it was his Yes, the, because he is, the, the commercial 
commercial users have a flat rate of the 393, and so um, they are not uh, having that penalty on the larger end because we recognize that a lot of those commercial users do not have the ability uh, to regulate the water use the same as a residence would. And so when we went back and showed the calculation, uh, the business owner was much better off to be on this flat commercial rate rather than to have their commercial tier with a rebate structure. Uh, because uh, again, um, you know, there are many of the commercial users where water is a part of their business and if they, if you penalize that, then it has a very negative impact on their ability to do their operation. Okay, we will, uh, if we may have to before Saturday, so we'll, we'll try to pull that back out and show you because it was very clearly in the business person's favor to be where he is. And if you look at, um, uh, this is our reclaimed water, uh, then you will see um, the uh, non-boosted rate is proposed to increase by five cents, and the boosted rate is proposed to increase by 10 cents. And then uh, this is again reflective of the increase that we're expecting uh, in the cost of that water from the city of Fort Worth, as well as the increase for the city's operation. And of course the same is being passed through for the construction meter and the gas well uh, meter should they uh, be using the reclaimed water and no changes to any of the base rates on that either. On these charts, we're gonna use 8,000 gallons, which is considered to be an average user. Uh, and we're going to show you a 10-year history uh, for water. We will also do this for wastewater, and then we will combine them uh, so that you can see, uh, and then we'll do some comparisons to some other cities as well. But if you look at this slide, um, you can see that our water cost for 2014 uh, at the full rate is proposed to be $35.39, and then after rebate, that rate would be $33.39, that is compared with the 2013 rate uh, when you factor in the rebate of $32.91. Um, so um, I had the math here somewhere. I believe that is a 40, uh, I'm sorry, about a 1.5% increase uh, over the prior year. And um, I believe that ended up being 48 cents. I don't know for some reason that's not looking right to me there. But, um, and then, um, Looking at that over the 10-year history, you can see that we've basically gone from $29.65 to $33.39 over a 10-year period when you factor in the rebate. Looking at the historical wastewater cost, um, the 2013 cost would have been $27.62 based on the proposed 2014 rates. The cost for 8,000 gallons would be $30.22. This is a 9.4% increase over the prior year. Excuse me. When the DRA charges us this amount, we just made this amount, do all cities have the same increase? Yes, ma'am. Regardless of population, all of the cities that buy from DRA will get the same time. Yes, ma'am. We're all given the same budget and the same cost for thousand dollars in that budget. And when they do the sub-up, we all pay our actual pro rate of share. Okay. Thank you. This slide uh, compares to all of our surrounding cities and a couple things to point out on here. Uh, in effort of being extremely conservative, these rates do not include the rebate. This is our full rate. So if you're comparing Ulysses proposed full rate to the current rate of all of the other cities. And with just what the mayor said, all of these other cities that participate with TRA, we know for sure will be experiencing cost increases and will most likely uh, raise their rates as well. Uh, and those that get some water from Fort Worth, will obviously it will be dependent upon what their rates are from Fort Worth. Uh, but again, in this comparison, this is our full rate without a rebate and also comparing to their current rate um, and not, not whatever they might do for the upcoming year. So at 3,000 gallons, you can see that EULA citizens would pay $17.39 compared to an average of $18.33. Um, we are um, less than most except for the city of Grapevine, which is pretty much lower across the board but then you're gonna see on the next slide that they have higher wastewater rates. 
uh, Bedford and Collierville are slightly lower than us at the 15,000 gallon uh, level and greater. Uh, Bedford has very high base rates and they get most of their revenue from the lower consumption users, which is very counter to our philosophy. Uh, and then Colleyville, you won't see it on this slide, but they have actually implemented tiered rates, but they don't start until 20,000 gallons and greater. Uh, but their highest rate goes up to $5.98 for anything over 50,000 gallons. So they actually have a tier that exceeds our tier uh, when we get up into the higher consumption. Uh, and again, if those cities raise their rates uh, through their budget process, then you're going to see that we're going to be even more competitive. Looking at the wastewater side, um, with our 36 cents uh, increase included in these rates, uh, Euless has uh, the lowest rate at 3,000 gallons. Uh, Bedford has a lesser rate thereafter, but again, as we just pointed out, they have higher rates on the water side at the very lowest consumption levels and a very high base rate. Uh, and then you saw that Grapevine was much lower on the water side, but if you see, they are significantly higher on the wastewater side. Um, Colleyville is slightly less after 3,000 gallons, uh, but North Richland Hills and Hearst are considerably higher. Uh, we're going to remind you here that uh, Euless caps our wastewater at 12,000 gallons, um, so anything um, after that you will see will level out at the $45.53 uh, level, and at that uh, range we are about middle of the pack there. Loretta, can you go back on the slide to the next slide? Yeah. So those rates right there you're showing us, minus hours, are their current rates. That is correct. That is their current rates, and that is our rate our with proposed, the increase included. Our proposed rate for this year. That is correct. Okay. That has the 19 cents in that rate, and that has the 36 cents in that rate for you as only. Mm -hmm. Everyone else's current rates. And then looking at this chart, it's the same thing. Again, this is our proposed rates, and we have given it to you with and without the rebate, but it is combined both the water and wastewater so that you can see how we stack up. You can see that with, uh, without our rebate, we're $65.61 for 8,000 gallons. That is only higher than Grapevine and Colleyville. When you factor in the rebate, we, as, we would go down to $63.61 and we would only be higher than Grapevine at that point. Grapevine has $60.07. Colleyville would go to $63.82. As you can see, Bedford, uh, North Hills, <coughs> and Hearst are all higher than us, and that, again, is based on their current rates. So you can see that we are uh, one of the uh, least expensive, even at our proposed rates. Um, and I would be very doubtful that all of those cities would be able to hold their rates given the increases that they're looking at. Yes, sir. How do we fund the rate stabilization fund? It is the deposits that we get back from TRA. There was some initial money put into that uh, from the, I believe it was from the excess sun balance in the earliest years. Uh, when you first establish that, and then subsequent to that, if we get any rebate, rebate back from TRA, we deposit it into that fund. And how much money is there? Um, I believe it's uh, right at $2 million. It started this year, too, a little over $2 million. There was uh, quite a bit of seed money that was put into that. Our rebate for the current year, I have that on the slides, uh, was about two hundred and eight or nine thousand um, dollars and um, last year the rebate was about um, I think about eighty five or ninety thousand dollars. How much of that fund will we use with the twenty five cents? About two hundred and fifty or sixty thousand dollars of that to fund this twenty five cents. Two hundred and seventy four thousand is what we're talking about. Yes. <laughs> okay. So that'll reduce at least as you mentioned, we started off this year a little more than $2 million. We'd expect to end next year at $1.7 million in reserves. That's why I say, could we use that up? Yes. But you know, if we have to pay a settle up, and you know, we, we'd like to protect that to some extent where we could continue to level that, those increases in coming years. But you know, there's no doubt. Could, could you do more? Yes. Uh, but it, 
probably puts it at greater risk in future years. Uh, it would, it would probably do for some wet years up here in these dry years. And this year right here, we, it's not been great for the water sales with these little frequent showers. So. Uh, the original thought on this is, Gary said, we have been seeing uh, regularly from TRA where one year you might get a 10 cent increase and the next year it would be a one cent decrease or maybe it would go up five cents and it would go down three cents. We had been seeing these fluctuations that we felt sure this rate stabilization would allow us to kind of remain level. But pretty much from 2010 on, we have just seen a steady increase. And so there's no opportunity to really stay flat because every year, no matter what we're giving back, but they're continuing to raise it the next year even more. And so, um, you know, our hope was when we had done it that you would kind of level out the peaks and you would be able to maintain uh, with no rate increase. But um, when when you're seeing the kinds of uh, increases that are being passed through to us, there's not the opportunity. We're not seeing two and three and four cents. We're seeing 13 cents and 32 cents. How, and how like much that. did we get back this last night? This, that was the... It was the two hundred thousand. That's the sheet right here. Back to that. Did you know anyone that? I said it's a little over two hundred thousand. A little over two hundred thousand. Exact number. Yeah. It was. We did receive. Um, Is it one hundred sixty-four? One hundred sixty-four thousand on the water side, and we received forty-four on the wastewater side in two thousand and twelve. The prior year, we received 82,000 on the water side and 5,000 on the wastewater side. And then there are years where we get a bill and we have to write them a check. And in 2012 was what we got this last May, right? Yes. Okay. With our wells being down as often as they've been down, have we been, have our purchases gone up significantly? Yeah, well, we're still producing water. But it's not to the extent that we right. We usually about a million gallons a day. Out, isn't it? But that, that's not that, that's not a huge percent of our overall volume. Yeah. But yeah, there, we, because every gallon we don't produce from well, we're not going to get better access. So uh, that there has been an increase. If we had a scenario like Bedford had this week with a big break and millions of gallons going away, so to speak, flowing away. Is there any kind of insurance policy? Is Bedford just out those millions of gallons? Yeah, I mean, and it's not, uh, there, there's got some attention, but we have, we have water main breaks on a regular basis. Our, our water loss is significant uh, for main breaks. And, you, know, you know, a million gallons seems like a lot. Plus, I have my gateway property in Southlake. Uh, one of the new sprinkler systems they put in, the thing was left open. Ran for three days before we knew it, that was a million gallons. Not just an irrigation section, not much bigger than this room. So, yeah. Fort Worth has that suffered a lot this summer too, with a lot of rain. Yeah, we came back with them, talked with you, I guess, be Saturday morning, and I bought a break in Texas Star, but it's, uh, oops, that, that's just a part of business. running business. And that, that's, we calculate that in what our rate needs to be. and. Uh, we are absolutely running business. That's an enterprise fund. And it's, it's got to pay for itself. And water loss is a huge part. We talk about meters, water meters. I mean, that also has to do with the water loss. So if the water loss is huge, but if the meters wear, they don't. They don't count. Right. Exactly. We have such crazy soils here. We try to kind of guesstimate how much water loss we have in a main break, but anybody that tells you, you know, have a water main break and lost two million gallons, it, it's a ballpark guess, because there's nobody out there measuring it. Uh, it's, it's significant. The, um, this chart is going to show you our sample sanitation rate for the water main slide, this is our current rate and their current rates. We do have a slide coming up that will show you uh, what our rates will be going to in 2014, um, but we want to go ahead and show you our current rates. Our current rate is $8.23 for uh, sanitation and $1.15 for recycle. 
And you can see that that is um, just the lowest there. We've got Hearst at 726, it's slightly lower, and Bedford at 722. Of course, you see Hearst's recycle rate is four dollars and seventy cents, and Bedford's recycle rate is two hundred three. And then all of the other cities there are considerably higher uh, than our rate. On the drainage side, if you remember, Colleyville was a little less than us in some of their levels of water and wastewater usage, but they have a seven dollar drainage fee on their water bill uh, compared to our two dollar and fifty cent drainage fee. Uh, and you can see that our 250 is the lowest of any of those surrounding cities. This is a full utility bill comparison uh, for 8,000 gallons. So if you were to get a bill for 8,000 gallons of water in any one of these cities, uh, and this one is comparing to our proposed rates for 2014, it does include the rate increase that our customers will see in sanitation and recycling uh, for, and that uh, rate increase goes into effect, I believe, in March of 2014. But we've gone ahead and included that in here now for comparison purposes. You can see that a total bill in Euless would be $77.78. The only city that would be less expensive would be Grapevine at $75.16. All of the other cities uh, would be higher than us, and that is, again, uh, our proposed rates compared to their current rates. Chris, you had a conversation with Greg Pine about their water? Yeah, it was just that. I had a chance to uh, talk about it much. The, the Great Pine Public Works, they were calling saying, literally, what are you guys doing on water rates? They have uh, eaten, for last, lack of better words, and passed these over a number of years. They, they've reached a, a bursting point, and they are looking at a, what he called a substantial increase this year and uh, what he was really picking uh, brain about was you know, our rate stabilization fund how that came about what the council was did with that how it kind of got started just how that worked because uh, I mean he's there what well, he said they're facing a substantial increase and it's just time to pay up so we look at their water rates the rather they are so far behind everyone and uh, I actually pulled this slide up while I was talking to him and he verified that those are their rates. Yes, they they were that they're that far behind uh, everyone. Grapevine produces around 30 percent of their own water. They're a TRA customer, but they they produce much greater percent than we do on their own. Uh, and what he was telling me is that's that's kind of enabled them to keep the heat piece a little bit. But there's a point that he can do it anymore. We talked a while back about TRA uh, and. Um, it is important to uh, look at this slide, just see um, maybe why we aren't recommending more from the rate stabilization fund today as we talked about the fund balance that's there today. If you look, these are the raw water costs. These will be the costs that TRWD is projecting to TRA. TRWD sells to TRA, TRA sells to the city of Euless. And TRWD is telling TRA that their 90 cent cost uh, for 2013 will be 98 cents in 2014. And you can see that raw water cost is on a sharp uh, increase to by 2020 having a dollar and 52 cents. So you're talking about a 50% increase uh, between now and 2020 in raw water cost.